All right, mes amours. So I, I am doing a couple of mommy-esque things. I have dropped my little sister off at a first communion party. Uh, it's Sunday today, and this is about to be super interesting because I am parked by the side of the road, and hence you'll hear the cars, but. I have been driving in Kinshasa now for about like a week and a half, going on two weeks now. And I literally thought this was the impossible, like I would get super overwhelmed when I first came in August, but it's June and your baby girl is on the road. So it's been exciting. It's been very thrilling. Hold on, I gotta put my phone on. It's a group of men. I just think it's interesting that like regardless of where like whichever country I'm in men are just like a constant you just never know what's gonna happen with them especially when you're a woman and I don't want to use the word like threat or anything like that because that's a tad aggressive in some scenarios but like like I'm a woman in a car and I'm by myself on my phone and my immediate reaction wasn't just like oh it's just a bunch of men walking by my immediate reaction was like oh i gotta like not look like i'm on my phone in the event that it draws any attention it's like you know there's a meme that goes around every couple of months which is like what would you do if there were no men and i feel like a lot of women like myself turn to the safety response like you feel like there's so many things that you do for the sake of your own safety because men are around that you don't necessarily do um, otherwise. So like if there were a bunch of women walking by and I had like my phone out, I don't think that I would have been as cautious to like put it down and kind of like look disinterested and look away. But like, cause it was a bunch of men walking by, my immediate reaction was stop filming, like put, put the phone down just cause I felt not threatened and I feel like that's the only word I can come up with but I felt like I needed to be more cautious there you go um and I don't know you you ladies what, what do you think and men in in the dms in my comment section like let me know what y'all think about my reaction but like I mean not that it's going to change much because my reaction is my reaction but yeah it's it's interesting there's master of none i don't know if you guys have seen it on netflix i think it's like the first or second season where they explore how um how women were just determining whether or not they were going to walk through the park or around the park and men just like never thought about it and it was kind of the same scenario that's just like triggered that memory for me anyway i was talking about how i've been driving in kinshasa and it's been really really interesting like all my reflexes i've used the horn and i've been honking like the most i've done in like all my years of driving but it's interesting you know i understand because i've met like women who live in kinshasa and they're like no i i'm never gonna drive like i have a driver i'm not gonna put myself through the stress and i get that but i also feel like at least for me it was part of my proving that like I could make it here because like my parents have things to do I we're not like Bill Gates rich or we're going to just like throw money at a driver like we don't have that kind of money and I don't want to be that person who's like oh my you know come like drop me off here pick me up here like I've lived by myself for like 12 years like the idea of having to do that constantly which is what I had been doing was just killing me so being able to just like carry on and do my own thing and like hop in a car and go has just been super super liberating i mean i feel like it's everybody's like 16th birthday or 18th birthday if you're able to get a car which i know is a privilege um but yeah it's been great being able to drive and being able to just oh, move around be like a grown woman um so today like i said i dropped my little sister off she's at this birthday party in like a nicer part of um, Kinshasa called Makampang and um, like they they went all out for this first communion I don't know if I can capture anything like on my way back in when I pick her up but like I was like Catholics be 
doing the damn thing. It's like a full out party, like tablecloths, balloons, like um, step and repeat. What is happening? It's less, it's children. I think they're both less than 14. I'm so confused. So like, yeah, 14 and under, like 14 and 12 maybe. It's not relevant, it's a lot. Um, and again, that's my opinion. I'm not Catholic, but I was not his it. I was not, it was a lot. Um, but yeah, my little sister's in there hanging out and I'm just gonna wait out here and um, catch up with a couple of friends and see how people are doing because all my friends in Boston are vaxxed and waxed for the most part and living their best lives. Some are in Jamaica with all their booty out and I'm happy for them. And so, yeah, I just thought I would do a quick check-in and let y'all know how my driving has been going. Because I am on the road, people. I am on the road. <laughs> oh, guys, look at that sunset. Oh, I hope we can catch it again. That was so pretty wow this is my drive home wow that look at that that's pretty all right y'all so when i say that i drive in kinshasa this is what traffic looks like in kinshasa it is absolutely ridiculous here like motorbikes everywhere you have to be super super careful when you're driving because the bikes come pretty close to the car as you can see but yeah man <laughs> it is chaotic to say the least like you gotta always be paying attention and this is like on my way to my house my parents house i should say um this is how we get there but cha you see bikes come from literally every direction and traffic is insane. This is why we leave like super early. Well, we, I mean, my younger siblings and I, when I'm dropping them off to school, because it's just crazy. But this is the view as well. That's the Congo River. But this is the traffic. So it's traffic with a view. <laughs> I hope this is not too loud. Hold on, let me see if I can roll up my window. Um, Welcome to a brand new day. It is Monday in Kinshasa. I am about to go pick up my little siblings and uh, bring them home. I'm going to be dropping off my mama. Uh, here she comes. Hola, mes amor. I finally picked up the children. Everybody is hot. It's 91 degrees. We're not going to make it. David isn't smiling because they just popped, popped a surprise to them that they're going to have to do exams that they're going to do next week, this week. So, nigga pissed. And then, the little girl is chilling because they didn't change their schedule. I am fully sweating. Trying to block this man from getting my spot because, ooh, trying to block that man from getting my spot because he was cheating and he did not want to line up with everybody else. So God forbid I let him pass me. Maybe the man in front of me go let him go through, but I'm that I'm that asshole that's not gonna do it. Nope. We ain't gonna let him go. Yeah, the person in front of me is a better man than I am. That's fine. I'm not mad. Let the man prosper. Just not on my watch. I don't know, man. It just throws me the wrong way. Cause he could have waited. What's this one doing? Get no, he trying to turn. No, 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 no. Do not let him look it, guys. Actually, where he trying to go? Everybody's going straight, and he's now trying to like bang a Yui here. No, that's gonna cross traffic. Stop this. Stop this. Thank you. Let's get some order here, Congo. That's what David looks like smiling and he's not pissed. <laughs> wow, you went zero to 100 on that frown and I, I am just, this is why I do not wear makeup here. This is exactly what every person who has lived in Kinshasa for over a year will say, it's not even hot. Wait for the dry season. It gets really, I'm like, it's 91 degrees. 
I don't know what else you want from me. Bernice, are you okay? Yeah? Yeah, show them the school bag you went with. Show them the school bag. Who, who do you think you are? Like, she said, I'm gonna give them fashion. Sabe even at school. That's how you know she's Congolese. That's for damn sure. Well, David, are you, are you gonna make it? <laughs> David's pissed. <laughs> David is gonna be all right. Don't, don't listen to them. Don't listen to the haters, okay? The haters being all your teachers <laughs> making you work. Don't listen to the haters. Oh, it's so hot. We will make it. We will make it. We are going to La Nouvelle Patisserie. We apparently saw that it was buy one donut, get one free day. So we must go get one donut. You ready? Yes. David, you ready? He said, yo, let me get my mask. Oh, here for buy one, get one free. The babies are going to choose one. What about you? Okay. Okay. We just need four, guys. Let's not complicate this. Oh, we're just buying two? Yeah. So you can get one, she can get one, I get one, Ma gets one. Mm -hmm. Guys, let's keep it simple. So, so what are you doing? I don't know. Sit down. Lift, lift, lift. What do you call a flavor in French? I'm like, Legu, c'est quoi? Choco, et comment passion? Ok, j'aimerais les passion et framboise. Yeah. Ok. Ok. On peut avoir, uh, j'achète le framboise et passion. Et puis, pour l'offre, je vais prendre uh, les autres deux, les vanilles et le chocolat. Là, ça marche? Oui. Ok. Y'all need to go check out the ice cream. It's stupid. It tastes so good. This is the one I got last time. Oh. This guy, the mask at home. So good. They have the cakes there. Oh, so so good. Where? Oh my god, they actually have built on today. But they call it the stony. That's weird. Okay. They're okay, no? Emma? That's so cool. And the coffee. What does it feel like it's missing? He's a hater. They ate om almost all of it. David, seven out of 10. Bernie's how many? 10 out of 10? Yeah, man, that's exactly how I feel. This was bomb. We had mango, mascarpone, cheesecake. And then the people had a little bit of an attitude, which is annoying, but sorry for another day, child. But that was good. Hold on, let me see the donuts. Wow. Open, open, tilt it. Ooh. We got, what was it? Strawberry, vanilla, raspberry, vanilla. Chocolate and passion. Which one did you taste, Bernice? No, David ate the raspberry. David. So you were just telling on Bernice that you the one who ate it. Yeah. How was it? Like in terms of donuts, maybe like six. In yeah. terms of flavor? The, no, the donut itself, like it wasn't the flavor, it was probably like eight. It was a really good donut itself. So what was the flavor you had? Uh, fries, no, yeah, raspberry. Raspberry was wow, you, bad. You just don't like fruit then? Is that a thing? Cause you don't like the mango, you don't like the raspberry. No, the mango just was like way too sweet. That's good. No such thing, guys. What about you, bunnies? Have you tried any of them yet? No. I should to relax. And since I have more education tomorrow, I'll More education exam, you should say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat this. My mom was here, but now she's gone to get fla for ugali. Cause that's what we're gonna have tonight. Where my canyons at? And I'm just sweating, guys. This phone vlog, just excuse it. It's hold on, let's see. It's probably over 90 degrees again, and just boiling. Lord have mercy. Only that one time we took 500 from you. Hola mis amor, I am stuck in traffic and it's another day in Kinshasa. It is Tuesday and in all honesty, I got the best days of my life, of my life as it stands right now. Um, so I had back in February applied for an innovator award with women who empower at Northeastern and the Cartier Foundation. And cha, your girl got a runner up. I got $5,000. And in all honesty, I, I, you know the days when you like just needed the one thing to kind of like get you through? Honestly, that has a friggin' gotten me through. Like I feel like I am ready to like, live out my dreams because I was really in a position where I was like do I just go back to corporate and getting a job and I haven't really worked since um, June of last year oh my god it's literally a year um, and this was like I could have gone and worked for the UN or something like that but at the moment I'm just like I really just want to try and give it a go and help people in the way that I know how and I apologize but I'm like sweltering it is 91 degrees again um, and so, excuse me and so it was everything to me literally everything to me to like I wake up to an email saying uh, you did so great you were runner up and here is the amount and my lord in heaven it's uh, it's the boost like sometimes you don't need like the moon and the stars sometimes you just need somebody else to like validate that the ideas that you have can work and honestly the innovation award was exactly that for me like I was at the point where I was like oh, well I guess prepare your resume which I did last week I'm like time to send these babies out because clearly like you trying to do this on your own is not working but God, God, I am I am so excited like I know for some people like five grand for a business might not be anything but for me it's literally everything so yeah the day started off pretty well it's about 11 in the morning and I'm gonna go pick up my siblings again and I just have the biggest smile because I'm so grateful that we have organizations that believe in women and that is the demographic that I want to support as well because we really don't always have people who put money where their mouth is for us so for me I definitely want to do that and this award is just going to help me get there so I'm so excited brand new day it is Wednesday and I am in my mother's vehicle today and I feel like this entire week's vlogs are gonna be just me starting off in a car somewhere but it's working because uh, I'm stuck in traffic per usual and we have time to chat so today is the day I go get my eyebrows micro microbladed I can't speak microbladed <laughs> and I am so excited because I'm not a makeup girl like I was saying and so like I don't I like to just get up and go that's why I always have my hair in braids or in crochet because I want to eliminate the amount of time that I have to spend on my hair and on my face and so I'm very excited to be getting my brows microbladed now this is always tricky because Microblading is, you know, semi-permanent. Um, it's like almost like a tattoo for your brows. But if it's going to cut me five minutes in a makeup routine, I am definitely doing it. So 
I'm gonna go do it. I'm not afraid of needles. I think you guys know I have a ton of tattoos. And so I'm not too scared of needles. It's gonna be on my brows, which is gonna be interesting. Um, but I can't wait to hopefully vlog the process. But if I can't vlog it, this is the before. And I'm gonna show you what the after looks like when I get back or when I can vlog at the place. All right, see you there. So I'm hoping that I can make it through this with less tears because I have, you know, so how we start this. So I was on my way, like I was explaining, jolly on my way. Um, thinking that I'm gonna take myself to get my brows microbladed and then um, the cop stopped me and I'm like, why are you stopping me? I'm stopping at the light. What's happening? So they're like, oh, you didn't signal. I'm like, yes, I did. I'm showing them like my direction say I need to take a right. So I'm taking a right. And then they're like, oh, you didn't signal and you're in a lane that's turning right. So you have to pay a fine. And I'm like, okay, first of all, I signaled. Second of all, why am I paying a fine for something that I did not do? Because I signaled. And the, the lady who was um, saying this, literally she was like on the other side of the road. So she, I was like the first car that stopped at the light. And so she's like, so I stop. I'm like, if the police are going to stop me, I'm going to stop me. I'm not going to like, you know, pull out. So then she's like, oh, in Lingala. And I don't speak Lingala. So I'm just like, oh, could you say it in French? Because I don't understand. And so she's like, well, um yeah you didn't you didn't indicate and i'm like yes i did i'm about to take a ride like my gps is saying why wouldn't i indicate of course i indicated she's like no you didn't indicate and i'm like i haven't first of all i haven't even made the turn and i have indicated i literally am indicating she's like oh no you're not indicating you haven't indicated literally i'm like am i being punked right now like this is dumb so they all like she gets she's like no pull up pull to the side pull to the side i'm like bet let's pull to the side because like i have time i mean i don't but like sure let's go so then she's like oh no um you didn't indicate and now like three other cops come and they're all like yeah you didn't indicate you didn't indicate and i'm like first of all none of you were there she just started saying something and everybody all of a sudden like jumped on that and i'm like okay so i can see where this is going everybody wants money because i look like okay somebody that has money i don't know but i look like a vulnerable single woman so they're like oh we're gonna get cash from her today and i'm like i don't have money i literally like reach in my wallet and i take out like the money that i do have and then i'm just i like stick it at the bottom of my bag because i'm like i'm not gonna pay for this this is stupid like i was signaling i always signal so then the um the guy the lady like hops in the back like two other people hop in the back a guy hops on the side they're like oh we, we need your like id I'm, I'm like here's my license here you go and then um they're like oh yeah you weren't signaling which is why we're stopping you that's an infraction um so what should we do i'm like I, I don't know what should we do because i was signaling i don't know what she's talking about literally like this is the absurdity of the conversation i'm like it's literally like a he said she said and i'm just like I was doing it i have no idea what proof you have to say i wasn't outside of her word but i was doing it because like my gp i was trying to go that way so of course i'm signaling and there are cars behind me so of course i'm gonna let them know i'm taking right and they're like well you weren't signaling now i'm like not all of you know that i wasn't signaling like literally one lady who was all the way on my left who could not have seen whether or not my light was signaling or not now she knows now everybody all of a sudden is an expert i'm like listen Oh, the last thing I'm going to do is pay for something that I know I haven't done. Like if I have actually done something wrong, I will pay to get the hell out of the situation. So I was like, no, that's fine. What, what are we doing? They were like, oh, you have to go to our boss, blah, blah. I said, take me to the boss. They're like, oh, let's talk about it so we don't have to get to the boss. They're like, da, 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 da. And I'm like, I don't have any money to give you. Like, I feel like you're not understanding and you're not listening to what I'm saying. I don't have money. And they're like, well, no you have to give us something or otherwise we'll take you to the boss and i'm like okay that might really work for people but i haven't done anything wrong like i don't know i just hate unfair situations and like this 
it's taking all of me to not cry but like this it's like the type of unfair that i'm just like it doesn't even make any sense outside of the fact that like you guys are all bullying somebody and so i was like yo let's go to your boss i have time let's go so they're like oh take a left take a right like pull up here and i'm just like okay and i'm like indicating as i go like as the emphasis of like y'all niggas are out here just like trying to lie on me because i'm clearly doing it so anyway i stop again because they're like oh no stop here they're like oh you know even gas money like just give us gas money i'm like i don't have any money and i don't understand why you people continue to say that i'm doing stuff that i haven't done so then they're like oh no you know oh we should actually say like no this is what happened i said let's go to your boss because i am telling you right now i'm not gonna sit here and lie about something that i haven't done if i had done it or i had not done it in this case then i would be paying you all so you can leave me the hell alone they, they like literally bring me to like where their office is which is literally like if you guys can see you see all of these like yellow houses which is just like walls and a metal roof which is fine again i don't freaking care but like that's where they bring me and they're like it's like super shady so i park my car and they're like yeah well this is it like we have to take you to the boss the boss is gonna ask you for like 300 dollars. like you should just give us something and i'm the whole time i'm like i haven't done anything why is why is the fact that i haven't done anything something you're not thinking about and i'm also not giving you any money i literally pull out my purse i'm like i got literally no money in here and they're like oh no she has money she has money it's fine it's fine she has money i said you know what let's go to your boss i sit down we get into the this little shack and i sit there and like okay boss whatever like i explain my case and they actually they come in and they like tell him blah 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 and they're again speaking in lingala i have no idea what they're saying and so i come in and, I, and then he starts speaking to me in lingala i'm like uh i like i said to everybody i don't speak lingala please speak it say it in french so that i understand what's happening and he's like well they said that the infraction is you didn't indicate when you were turning and i said one i haven't i didn't make a turn two i actually one i indicated two i didn't make a turn that's the order and he's like oh so they said that you were turning and you didn't indicate i said i indicated i did not make a turn i stopped when she told me to stop which was before i even made the turn they're like well then he goes well that's what they said and that's the infraction so i gotta put it down and i'm like okay so you're supposed to represent justice right now like you're their boss i'm telling you like and and we can come out to my car and i can show you we can recreate the scenario and i can show you how far she was and then you can decide and he's like no they said that that's what you did and i'm like okay so you weren't there they have all left at this point and i'm the one who's left here and you are not even listening to what i'm saying you're just automatically going with the fact that oh well um she said that you didn't signal so that's what it is oh i i wasn't there so i can't recreate the scenario and i'm like exactly that's why i'm telling you i was there i i've been driving for like a ton of years at this point let's recreate the scenario so that you can tell me if it makes sense that somebody as far away as she was would have known that i wasn't signaling or not and he goes oh well you know um that's what she said so that's what i have to put down on the ticket and i'm like okay so where is the justice for a citizen of the congo like what is my recourse because at this point you're saying that because other people who three out of four of them weren't even there when the scenario happened or didn't happen came and gave you a story that's who you're going to believe like cops everywhere like it's i was like wow the first time in my life like the first time since i have been driving and it's been like i don't know almost 10 years 10 years yeah almost 10 years at this point like today is the first time like i've ever been stopped by the cops and it was horrible and i'm like i understand my scenario might be like for some because some people die but the worst part is like he just kept going and putting like the ticket down and i was like hold on so nothing of what i'm saying here is going to change anything and he's like well that's what they said i wasn't there and i'm like okay i understand you weren't there but i have given you my case i have told you we can go and recreate the scenario so that we are able to figure out like whether or not this happened and your response is still to write the ticket 
okay so i I'm not going to sit here and like go back and forth with you. Like Jesus is literally going to be my judge at this point because clearly you don't care. Two, you're seeing me and all you see is like, oh, she's going to pay. She has money. And then three, you don't even care whether or not I have money, which I keep telling you I don't. And you don't care. And you're just like, oh, well, you're going to go to the bank. And I'm like, I don't have an account here. Oh, well, I guess we have to hold on to your car until you pay it. I'm like, okay, so if I don't pay you guys hold on to my car and my keys and my license um and my car log until i pay and he's like yeah <laughs> i'm like okay so i've sat here for at this point it was like a 12 a 20 minute back and forth with this man with like none of the cops that all the cops had already just gone and i was like so i'm gonna sit here go back and forth with you and you really don't care and i'm still going to have to pay or my car gets impounded got it like what was the purpose of me then having this conversation with you he's like well uh, uh, uh i'm not i mean i'm not god i wasn't there and i'm like yeah but like you're supposed to be representing justice right now like they brought me to you because they said you were their boss and you're not listening or like even willing to go and recreate a scenario so that you could judge for yourself whether or not it happened you just want the money if you can just like this is the one thing about like congo that just upsets me to my core is that like if the issue is i want your money just freaking say that just stop me and be like i need 20 bucks you know rather than just be here and like beat around the bush get people to drive and stop and drive and stop and then you're out here singing a whole song for complete like nonsense you understand like there was no need for me to have been stopped like there was no freaking need if i had turned and they had seen like oh yeah she wasn't indicating fine let's go but i'm indicating i'm at a stoplight and you've literally just like taken me to your your like prison version like police station actually version this is just pure like daylight freaking robbery like these are the things that frustrate me so much like We're not going to do it because it's not even worth it. <laughs> but it is this level of frustration, like, that I... You know you want so much better for your country. Like, you, I understand, like, it's hard. It's hard for everybody. But the rate at which people, like, take advantage of others in this country is just unconscionable. Like, anyway, long story short, and I said I wasn't going to cry, so... Um, I ask him, I'm like, okay, so you're like, literally as I'm talking to him, he's just like putting down like the information for the ticket. And I'm like, okay, so, um, you're going to do what now? And he's like, oh, when I'm done here, we're going to go to like a bank and then the bank is going to like, um, charge your card and then they'll give you a receipt. And I'm like, okay, I told you I don't have an account here. Like, I don't, I don't think you're like even listening to the words that I'm saying, which is doubly frustrating. And he's like, well, um, yeah, that's the process. We just have to go to the bank. And I'm like, okay, fine. How much is it then? And he's like, it's $35. I was like, okay. So y'all wanted to continue <laughs> to frustrate me for $35. And that's fine. Like, I will, I will pay, <laughs> which I did. Um, but there was really nowhere else to go there wasn't just like um like oh i'll have my day in court or like oh then go to my boss and he'll make a decision he was like the boss like he was the one who wrote like he was like there's no one else to see this is it yeah you're gonna pay 35 dollars for this and i was like so i as a congolese citizen i can come i can plead my case to you i can ask you to come with me to judge whether or not they were being honest about what they were saying and you can still go and side with people who three out of four were not there two people who are no longer here three you who were who wasn't even there without the ability to validate what whether what i'm saying or what they're saying is true you're just going to go and go ahead and write a ticket because sure let's get 35 more dollars in our coffers grand so moral of the story for me is as 
as much as I hate being part of a corrupt system, which this is, it is a very corrupt system. And the culture is so ingrained that cops are fully entitled, which to me is like on the highest level of just like, how do you as a citizen, like what is your recourse as a citizen? There's like nothing at this point, or unless I was gonna call like some rich uncle who has influence in the police, which I shouldn't have to freaking do. Anyway, um, yeah, we have like zero recourse at this point. It's who, who am I, who, whomst, whomst am I going to go and complain to? So it's now 11.20, I gotta go get my siblings from school and I've had a crappy day and I'm just gonna try and figure out like this this cannot be <laughs> this cannot be how I end my day I'm going to have to find joy because if I keep this on my heart in my mind it's going to completely like tear me down and I I can't let it I can't let it because I live here now like if I was going to get on a plane and then just like be out and be like, ah, oh, screw Congo, like everything sucks, like fine, I could have done that. But I live here, like this is my reality. <laughs> I don't have anywhere else to go because um, this is my home. So I got to find joy. I got to push through. Yeah, this, this entirely sucks. Congo we are now going into the third wave and oh god and <laughs> we have to stay masked and start social distancing again so I gotta have my mask on because after yesterday's fiasco with the cops I'm like giving nobody any reason so anyway not that I gave him a reason yesterday today is Thursday and another day in the car in traffic per usual so today I'm gonna go attempt to get my my brows microbladed one more time. It just feels so weird talking with this. I'm gonna go attempt getting my brows microbladed again, and then um, hopefully I'm successful today because I can't. I honestly cannot. Um, what was I saying? Yeah. So we are approaching a lockdown again. I think. I mean, people are trying to not be alarmist, but. I feel like that's where we're going. Um, just for an update, today is in the 80s. So it is much cooler today. Um, not that 80s is any, any cool, cooler. It is cool by any stretch of the imagination because it's technically like summer weather. But here, being that we hover around the 90s, um, 80 is, is actually considered cool, so enjoying the cool weather today hopefully we have nothing but blessings and mercies today not that we didn't have that jesus yesterday just i need i need a day where my sanity is not challenged um yeah so i gotta get my brows microbladed pick up my siblings maybe put some gas in the car and then get back to doing some business for my business. I can actually like officially say I am a business owner. <laughs> I know guys. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be super interesting. I'm gonna try talking about my journey, um, setting up my venture capital farm here in the Congo. So we shall see how this goes. Um, I'm just excited. I know it's, it's at least in my opinion good to show both highs and lows that people go through in life i feel like many times when you see vloggers and yes i'm sweating like a crazy person again um but most times when you see like vloggers vloggers 
um, any kind of influencers, you usually just get the highlight reel of everything that's amazing. And I, I feel like for me, I want to be a little bit more purposeful so that I'm also not misleading and a little bit more authentic um, with y'all. Um, and, and I'm also a big believer in vulnerability. Like the more vulnerable you are, the more people tend to, ooh, the more people tend to um, feel connected to you because they too go through more or less the same things. I mean, I, I don't know how many of you are getting um, stopped by cops in the Congo, but um, I think it's good to share the highs and the lows so that you're not under the impression that I live this like uber for a fabulous life. I'm creating, you know, with God's grace, a fabulous life, but it's not fabulous every day. So, oh my God, I hope that the camera wasn't in a weird position that whole time. I'm like using my phone and trying to focus on the road and on this. But anyway, yeah, let's see how the day goes. happening I was a little nervous before but um, I think it's gonna be okay I think was that fun? okay y'all so this is moments later and I'm super annoyed because I still don't have my eyebrows done I feel like it is the journey that will never end and so I have fully given up for at least the next couple of weeks. I'm not gonna attempt this. Not worth it. I don't need a headache. So yeah, that's the update. No eyebrows done. <laughs> 